This conference will now be recorded. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you. We give you honor and we give you glory this morning. We thank you for Sister Waniga. We ask that you will touch her in her body right now. Hallelujah, God, that there will uh, no infirmity will attach itself to her in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you that you have given us authority over all the works of the enemy. And so we bind up those works right now. We decree and declare that, that we have all power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall do us any harm. We bless you for this day that you have made. We thank you for the provision of shelter, of food, of clothing, and every good and perfect gift that we have received from you on today. So be glorified in everything that we say and do today. As we go out as lights into the world, may we shine so bright that men may behold our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. You Use us on today to affect your will in the earth, Lord God. Hallelujah. We don't want to lean on our own understanding, nor do we want to go our own way. So we ask you to ordain every one of our steps today. And in everything that we do, may you be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Sister Juanica. God bless you this morning, Sister Prisca. I see you on the line. So since you're a business owner, we're going to ask you to close out as we pray for businesses on this morning. All right, saints of God, let us go into another encouraging word on this morning. And um, we're going to go to our devotion. Our devotional is... is um, it's very, very encouraging to each and every one of us. And I know we have some um, young saints on the line, and I just pray that it will really be a blessing to them on today. The text today comes from the New Living Translation, so we're going to stay there with any reference scriptures. It says, God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead come back to the Lord. So I want to go in and just give some uh, background text to this. Let's see, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And um, I believe I wanted to pick up from verse 11. Yeah, we are God's ambassadors. Because we understand our fearful responsibility, and this is the Apostle Paul who is speaking to the church at Corinth. This is his second uh, letter to them. And he starts out having to, um, in, in some way, defend himself because there have been those that have come in and tried to turn away the... Um, uh, what is it? it? They tried to cause him to lose credibility um, with the uh, church there at Corinth. There's others that, you know, have come in and he often warns in his epistles, you know, to be careful of false prophets and false apostles and those that come in to bring division and, and that type of thing or to turn you away from the faith. So this is another uh, one of those letters, even though there's some other things that he is um, addressing <laughs> because he's coming through also um, to pick up an offering from them. Um, or, or he has asked them to send an offering. But in this particular chapter, chapter five, he's talking about the ministry that has been commended or given to him from the Lord. And um, it starts, he starts this in uh, chapter three, but we're going to go right into chapter five and begin at verse 11. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. 
are we commending ourselves to you again? In other words, are we bragging? No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us. Uh -oh. We're giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. And, and so again, um, and, and we know if you read the biography of Paul, Paul was a, he was a masterful, and I'll just use that word. He was very knowledgeable in Old Testament script. He was very knowledgeable, um, you know, in form, um, in politic. He just, he was very acute. He was very acute. And, um, and when he had an encounter with the Lord, he says he counted everything that he had ever learned, everything that he knew as dung, that he might know the excellency of Christ. And so he has no reason to go around bragging, but instead he was very fervent about the call of God that was upon his life. So it's no need in him bragging, yet there were others who called themselves apostles that came and they came with with form and with fashion and and with excellency of speech and that type of thing and he's just letting them know listen i'm not bragging on myself okay i don't have a reason to like they do and then in another passage of scripture he tells them you are proof of my ministry because he went for it. The Lord told him that his ministry would be not just to the Jews, he would minister to them, but he's the one responsible for bringing the message to the Gentiles. And so he says in 12, are we commending ourselves to you again? In other words, he you know, gave a defense of his ministry once before. No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. So those that God has called, you know, listen, we, we need to recognize and understand that everything we have comes from the Lord. We're no great wonder. We're no great orator. Everything that we have, everything that we do in representing the gospel message, it is of God. So we don't have to go out to make ourselves of any reputation. And we see that today. There, there's, I, I mean, I was looking at a um, flyer that had gone around where they were having a contest of the best a uh, young preacher. And when I saw it, the thing vexed my spirit, but in further reading of the commentary, there was so much noise about it. See, cause we don't need competition. We don't need competition. All of us are lights. All of us, hallelujah, represent the salt of the earth. All of us are stars. <laughs> Hallelujah in the kingdom of heaven. Glory be to God. So we don't need, and that thing kind of fostered this competitive spirit. And guess what? There was going to be a hundred dollar prize. They were going to be given five minutes to speak. And whoever won or whoever got the popular vote, listen, God forbid that be any of us. Hallelujah. We're not out for a popular contest. What we're out to do is make Jesus popular in all the ends of the earth. And we do that, hallelujah, not just by our word, but by our conduct. So he says here, verse 13, if it seems we are crazy, because some alluded to him as having lost his mind, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. And I love this, what Paul says, because uh, uh, when he came to know, Remember, and a few weeks ago, the message came forth 
Remember, he was on the Damascus Road thinking he was absolutely right in defending his faith that he knew at that time by persecuting Christians by bringing them in to be judged and, and many of them would be killed until he met the Lord. Hallelujah. Until he had that experience on the Damascus road and that experience, hallelujah, Jesus, it turned him around. And he came to know the love of Christ, the, the same Christ that you and I know today. He says, Christ's love is what controls us or should control us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, don't forget that. We cannot look down on any sinner man or sinner woman or sinner boy or sinner girl because Christ died for them. And we'll see through the scripture today, hallelujah, that, that as Paul besought, hallelujah, we should beseech those, hallelujah, to be reconciled to God. For this cause, Christ came into the world. He says, either way, Christ's love controls us. Verse 14, since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Watch this now. Now, in order to have this new life, you have to receive it. Well, where are you going to receive it from? You're going to receive it from those who were sent into the world to present this gift of salvation. That is you and I. Hallelujah. So everyone that receives it, hallelujah, my God, will also believe. Well, let me go back here because I'm my, my vision is all over the place. Either way, Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all. We also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. I believe in the King James, it says, we no longer, no man after the flesh. Hallelujah. And, and we've got to get to the place where we recognize, hallelujah, that we, a, a person is either led by the spirit of God or he's driven by another spirit, the spirit of Antichrist. That unregenerate man, hallelujah, is driven by the spirit of Antichrist. All right, he's unregenerate. He's he's not been made new. So we don't judge people after the flesh. We recognize as believers that one or two spirits are controlling them. Hallelujah. So we stop evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And so an unregenerate person or a person that has not been born again, hallelujah, when, when you talk to them about Christ, they just think of him as somebody from history. All right. And, and a person who's religious just thinks of him as as one of the prophets or what have you. They don't see him as God. They don't see him as the son of God. They don't know him. Hallelujah. In that manner. But it says in verse 17 in the King James says, if any man be in Christ. Hallelujah. He is a new creature or a new person. 
old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So now we know him <laughs> in a different light. We know him for who he is. Hallelujah. And all of this, verse 18, and all of this is a gift from God. All of this newness that we experience in this new life, it is a gift to us from God our Father who brought us back to himself through Christ. Remember, sin caused a division, a separation, but God so loved us Hallelujah, that even in the garden, when sin first showed up in the garden, he had already had a plan of salvation through his son. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so he reconciled us back to himself and God has given to us the B part of verse 18 and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. Every single one, if you were born again on yesterday, you have the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, you have, and I asked the question on yesterday, how many of you do not know what your calling or purpose is in ministry? Every single one of us has this ministry of reconciling, hallelujah, unregenerate, unsaved, not born again, hallelujah, man back to God. We are an extension of Jesus' ministry. Hallelujah. It says, all this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer, look at this glory, hallelujah, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. There are people who are out there like I was myself at one time, amen, that thought I was so bad and had done so wrong that there was no way I could be forgiven. There was no way. I, and you know what? I was born up in the church singing, yes, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. But, but my life had turned so, and going down the, the, the corridors of darkness so, hallelujah, till I thought that there was no hope for me. And, and when you get to that place, there's a lot of talk. Hallelujah, we know that this month is Mental Awareness Month, and there's a lot of talk now about how many people since the pandemic have committed suicide, but it started before the pandemic. Let me just um, mute out Samantha. God bless you, Samantha. Hallelujah. All right, so <clears throat> we've been given this assignment. We cannot be quiet. We cannot be quiet. We have the hope that is in the gospel that we can't just keep it to ourselves. Hallelujah. I think Elder Rose was saying yesterday, we, we can't just sit inside the walls of the church, but every direction, every lane, every road, every path that we take. Hallelujah. We need to ask God, give me your heartbeat. Who in this place that I'm in, who in Target, who in Walmart, who in Publix, hallelujah, needs an uplift? Who needs to know, hallelujah, that you love and care for them? And God will just, you know, it, it won't be coincidentally. No, because everything he does is about purpose. He'll have somebody bump your cart. 
hallelujah, or ask your, you know, advice or opinion or what have you. And that is an inroad when you start your day like that. Lord, who is it you want me to speak to on your behalf? We have a powerful message. Hallelujah, that can change the course of people's lives. Look at all the young people, hallelujah, that, that, that are just out of control. They need to know the love of God. And you and I are responsible. He says he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. God wants to be reconciled back to his creation. And he made the road. Jesus became the bridge, hallelujah, that brings us back. Mighty God. He says in verse 20, and this is the key verse for this morning. So we are Christ ambassadors. We're his representatives. We represent the kingdom of God. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. And we are now pilgrims and sojourners. Some of us, we, we're so rooted to this earth like we're going to live here forever. No, no, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And so we need to, we need to, to bear this world real lightly. Because at any time, any moment, hallelujah, we can be translated. We can be in the beginning of five talks about that. For we know that if our earthly house be dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. This world is not our home. So we need to loosen ourselves from it. And everything we do in this earth realm, hallelujah, needs to be according to the purposes of God. Will you please unmute uh, mute your phones? Uh, just everybody check your phone and, and mute. So we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal to lost mankind. Samantha, okay. that is. all right, if she's traveling or I don't know what she got going on this morning, but she keeps unmuting her phone is automatically unmuting itself all right so we have we have this message we have and it's an appeal god is making his appeal to those who are lost through us we speak for christ when we plead come back to god hallelujah when, when we allow him, hallelujah, to speak through us, to beg, there's a word in the King James Version that it says, we beseech you. We beseech you. In other words, we plead with you, come back to God. Hallelujah. And we're living in that hour now. Hallelujah. To plead with people get right with God, come back to God, receive Jesus as your personal savior. Know that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. Know that he took upon himself all your sins, past, present, future. Hallelujah. And when you're in Christ Jesus, you won't be judged according to your sin because your sin has already been judged through the shedding of Christ's blood. Hallelujah. This is a good message. This is a relief. And we have that word, that message of reconciliation in our mouth, every single one of us every single one of us 
And when we go to our family and friends say, you know what, you just need to give your life to the Lord. You need to surrender everything. Hallelujah. We are pleading. We are beseeching them on Christ's behalf. Verse 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. We're now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we're not sinners in the, in the respect that we keep on sinning. That's our agenda every single day. No, do we sin? Yes, we sin. But we're not practicing sinners, I hope we're not. We're not practicing sinners. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when I read this message and began to meditate the commentary, we're going over there. And I began to um, just meditate on that. The, the, the thought came to me, hallelujah, if we speak for Christ, if we speak for him and we implore people, that means we believe what we're saying. And sometimes we can't speak because we don't believe. We don't believe. So let's look at, at what Pastor T. Green says. He says, Jesus is the word of God, the logos behind all creation and the written word is his revelation. We know John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, capital W, was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah. The, the, the word, the logos, it means a divine expression. Hallelujah, a divine expression. Or, um, what? Well, let me go here and, and let me go to John 1, because I think there was something in this living word here. John 1 and 1. Okay, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, the word. And nothing was, and he existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. And so when we talk about logos, we're talking about, okay, God, the word, Jesus, the word, hallelujah. And words are, are a, um, an expression of their, their speech, their speech. And that's how we communicate or express ourselves is through speech or through words. And so God, the father, expressed himself we know god through his son jesus says if you have seen me you have seen the father because he became the expression he became the spokesman he was the representative of god father hallelujah he is the express image of god and so it says here Jesus is the word, the logos behind all creation. And so when you go back to Genesis 1 and 1, it says, and God said, he expressed himself, <laughs> glory to God. He expressed himself and through his expression, hallelujah, things begin to manifest. And he is the written word in his revelation. So why would God need us? If he's the express image of God, if he is the word of God, if he's the logos of God, hallelujah, then why would he need us to be his mouthpieces? Watch this. I love this. Because he's an infinite God. 
and he needs an infinite number of stories if he wants to demonstrate the many facets of his nature. How many of us are on the line this morning? Let's see, 22 of us this morning. Every one of us, every one of us has a personal story, hallelujah, of God's nature, of God's nature, of the many facets of his nature. Sometimes our stories intersect, they cross, they're the same or similar. But every single one of us has a unique story and there are individuals that you can capture or, or, or captivate through your story. That's one of the reasons he created billions of bearers of his image. Remember now, we're image bearers. We're image bearers. And there are billions, we may think it's only a handful of us, but there are billions from the beginning of time. Hallelujah. Amen, who are bearers of his image. We all have the potential to uniquely represent something about God that others cannot. My Lord, you are an express image of Jesus. We're, we're little Jesus. They, they ridicule the saints by calling them Christians or uh, uh, Christ ones, those who follow Christ. They used it as a term of, of ridicule. But we are little Christ. We are. We're Christ. We are his image bearers here in the earth. He reveals himself through a multitude of stories. And each of ours is one of them. That's so beautiful. Every one of us, we are living epistles. We are living words. Our lives are testimonies of God's goodness, of his kindness, of his love, of his forgiveness, whatever attributes you can think of, of his truth. Hallelujah. We are all living epistles of it. So we make appeals as if we were the voice of Christ, pleading with people to be reconciled to God. We not only speak his message to them, we embody it. That's what it means to be a living epistle. Hallelujah, that it ain't just talk, it's walk. It's walk, it's conversation. It's how we live our daily lives. It's how we interact. And if you look throughout scripture, and I may turn to a few of them today, where Paul says, I beseech you, actually in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse one, he says, we then as workers together with him, beseech you, that you receive not the grace of God in vain. So there are many times that he's imploring and, and exhorting and admonishing and uh, uh, pleading with us to live out. What did he say in Romans 12, 1? I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifices. So we embody this message. It says we are living testimonies of what, what Christ has done, examples of his ability, look at this, to resurrect, to heal, to redeem, to restore, to call and equip. We are examples of his great power at work in frail humanity. We are stories of his provision, his protection, his comfort, his guidance, and his promises. We teach, preach, and live his words. I remember when my kids were younger, hallelujah, they were in their preteen age, and um, 
you know, they would ask me a question or what have you. And I would always say, the Bible says, they're like, ma, all you say is the Bible says. <laughs> Because the Bible said the, the, the word has transformed my life. So I can no longer give you my personal opinion. I have to give you what the Bible says. Because he has the words of life. They may not have wanted to hear it. And there are people around you that even though you can't see their hands move, they put their, their fingers in their ears to, to, to try to Stop. They don't want to hear it because the word has the power to convict. It has the power, hallelujah, to, to, to go in and, and make a person not feel comfortable. So they don't want to hear it. And so what Paul is saying to those at Corinthian, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Preach it when the, he told Timothy, if they don't want to hear it, still preach it. Hallelujah, in season and out of season, when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Why? Because God is reconciling a lost people to himself and we are his mouthpieces. We are his bullhorn in the earth and we don't do it for fame or for fortune. We do it because the love of Christ compels us because we have met his love hallelujah his love i don't want to see anybody lost when i drive up and down the highway and and i see the lostness of men and women my heart aches it aches because i know the power of the blood of Jesus that is able to reconcile them just like he did with the man that was living in the tombs, cutting himself until he met Jesus. And too many times we're afraid. We're afraid to go into the highways and the hedges and the byways or to deal with the alcohol or prostitute or the transvestite or whatever. It is. We're too afraid. Is it because we don't believe? We are stories. We are stories. We are a vast multitude of vessels carrying his presence and his voice into every corner of this world. Hallelujah. When we give, when we give, when we support even our brothers there in Africa, hallelujah, we're giving voice to the word of God. Pastor Johnny is now teaching you know, on how our tithes and our offerings speak for us in heaven. God sees our work. We don't have to, to put up a picture or a video or every time we do something. Hallelujah. God sees. That's all that matters. The angels that are recording and God seeing it. But we must go. We must do. He says here, does that sound too ambitious or presumptuous, regardless of how it sounds, it's true. What's true? That we are the stories, that we preach, teach, and live his words, that we carry a vast multitude, that we are a vast multitude carrying his presence. It's true. God has made it clear that his glory will cover the earth. And he does hardly anything on earth that doesn't involve his people. Hallelujah. Let me, when Jesus Christ paid the price, hallelujah, was resurrected and ascended up into heaven and sat on the right hand of the Father. The last thing he said to his disciples was, go ye therefore. And, and guess what? We have restored dominion 
So, so when we plead to God, hallelujah, your kingdom come, your will be done in the earth. He is not going to invade this earth unless he does it through us. He's not going to come in unless it's through us because he has restored dominion to us. And so when we see the, 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 you know, the wackiness of everything going on, we've got to ask ourselves, is that my assignment? Is this where you're sending me to go? Is this what you would have me to speak on? We've got to ask the Lord. Every one of you that is still employed, hallelujah, that goes into a job, your, your, your business, your business should be prosperous because you're there. Because you're, you're he said, I will every place the sole of your feet trod, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. But if you go in there and you're part of the complaining circle and the murmuring circle and all those different circles and you're not willing to stand alone and represent Christ and bring the kingdom and its righteousness, bring its governing rule into that place, you're part of the problem. And you're supposed to be a witness. We got to reevaluate our position here in the earth. God has made it clear that his glory will cover the earth and he does hardly anything on earth that doesn't involve his people. When his glory covers the earth, it will largely be through us. When he speaks, it has almost always come through a prophetic voice or a testimony or a written record of his ways all inspired by his spirit, but made manifest through a human agent. We need to remember our sacred role. We not only hear and receive God's voice, we are called to express it everywhere we can. There was in, um, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians. Let me go back here. I think it's in 1 Corinthians. Uh, okay, that's Romans. Was it Romans? It was one place I wanted to refer to. Yes, it's in, um, it's in Acts, the 26th chapter. Let me go there. Acts, the 26th chapter. And this is Paul. Hallelujah. Okay, so <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Paul is teaching us here. Hallelujah. Paul in, ch in, in um, 26 chapter 1, he is brought before King Agrippa, and we know the stories, you know, I mean, Paul, he went from prison, uh, from prison to prison. His, his life looked like, that's why he can say, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Because of the things that he had to suffer for the sake of the gospel, but he knew what had been purchased for him was far greater than all of his letters behind his name, all of the, the commendations that he received. He knew it. So here he is now defending himself before Agrippa. Verse one, then Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Because, see, there were accusations that had been brought against him. But now he gets to speak before the king. There may be times that God permits you to speak before those that are in authority. And, and listen, your brow may sweat. The palms of your hand may sweat. That sweat may, may trickle down your back. But open your mouth boldly and declare what God says. He says, Paul says, I think, okay, let me read it from New Living. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you may speak in your defense. So Paul, gesturing with his hand, started his defense. 
He says, I am fortunate, King Agrippa, that you are the one hearing my defense today against all these accusations made by the Jewish leaders. For I know you are an expert on all Jewish customs and controversies. Now, please listen to me patiently. And he goes on down through, you know, his history and what have you and how he was on the mission on the Damascus road. He gets to give his testimony. And God will give you opportunities to tell your story of how he translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. God is an amazing God. He is an amazing father. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I love him with all my heart. I love him with all my heart because he saved a wretch like me. Hallelujah. The prayer says, glory to God. Abba, Father, Lord Jesus. My story doesn't seem very dramatic or impressive. Yet I know your hand has been deeply involved in writing it. Therefore, it reveals something about you. May I never be guilty of hiding or minimizing your glory in my story. I share you well by sharing who I am. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Your story, yours and his, it's yours and his story. Hallelujah, whatever you're going through, whatever he has brought you out of, it is yours and his story. I wrote that book, He Heals the Broken Heart and Living and Loving After Rejection. And right in the beginning of the book, that's what I wrote. This is our story. This is your story and my story, Lord, combined into one. Because I came to realize, hallelujah, that's why you got, write your story. Write your story. If it's one thing that he has brought you out of, write it, write it, because you're leaving a testimony for someone else to read. How many, I don't know about y'all's library, but I got books everywhere. I, I, I ordered two or three of them yesterday. I have books everywhere because I love the stories of Jesus' activity in other folks' lives. Because their story, there are some things I haven't been through. I haven't been through. But when I can relate someone else's story, I can share that with someone who could be going through the same thing. That's why it's important for us to testify of what God has done for us. We are his mouthpiece. Hallelujah. We are his, the infinite God, the God of all glory. We are his mouthpiece here in the earth. God bless you. We're going to open up the line if there are any comments this morning. Hallelujah. Even if you want to share a testimony, a short testimony, so we can get others in that may want to share, um, feel free because th this, saying to God, this is it. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning. This, is, this seems like a continuation of yesterday. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I was so 